Hello everybody, welcome back to the We're Eating Jelly Beans show. Today is March 29th, happy Easter. Hope you're having a good weekend. We're here to oh, start you off with AI. Yep. Is that going to be the, the weekend? Yeah, it's, it's Easter, Easter weekend. What are your plans? I'm going to church with my mom and then I'm going to spend time with my entire extended family. I'm going to take some of my empty Amazon boxes and put sticks under them so I can try to catch the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one man who will probably have a very happy Easter on account of the waterfalls of money that are constantly falling over him is this man, and he has some bold predictions. NVIDIA's Jensen Huang says that AI hallucinations are solvable and artificial general intelligence is maybe five years away. Something about this picture, it looks like he's at a DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> he, the stadium was insane. Like He was in the stadium in Silicon Valley, and it was just like... And he was just like a tiny little, like one pixel and just it's like, oh, let's it's, look at the robots. It's so weird how we used to have rock stars. <laughs> uh, now we have this. I don't think this was a move in the right direction. No. He really likes it too. Which yeah, is you a can lot of tell. Fun. <laughs> you can tell they really get into it. I mean, think about Elon Musk. He yeah. lives for it. I mean, GTC really is just unbelievable, mind-blowing it was it was insane. Well, they had a lot of announcements. I cherry picked some of the more interesting ones. Nvidia has a virtual has virtually recreated the entire planet down to 1.25 kilometers of resolution, and now it wants to use its digital twin to to crack weather forecasting for good. I actually did a little bit of the of stuff on this in the other video. You should check that out because they used 96 GPUs to do the simulation, and then you could play play with it on the show floor and yeah it's just like oh we finished another couple days of simulation and then they added chris the bailey set. is sweating yeah they are coming for chris bailey's job you don't know who that is the local weatherman and uh <laughs> they're lying also, slut but he's our lying slut they're also coming for every other job in the world yes that's right no matter who you are you will be replaced nvidia is now powering ai nurses the cheap ai agents often offer medical advice to for patients over video calls in real time I, i'm not super enthused about this no. one because uh, we need to work out that hallucination problem first and before. we also have that employment problem yeah right well, yeah yeah. Well, and this one is one that uh, is probably going to be good. I worry that because of how this will be required to run, that this is going to be a subscription model <laughs> like everything else. Yes. And it's eventually going to be like, do you want to have this character in your game or not? No, that was Jensen's plan. Like literally, he's like, hey, we want to be in the data center. We want to, We want everybody to use our stuff. It's a subscription model. So, Baldur's Gate 4, guess what? <laughs> NVIDIA partners with Ubisoft to further develop its AI-driven NPCs. So, you write a backstory for a character. It's like, you're a, you're a noodle chef. You're, you're down on your luck, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then AI will fill in the details. And you can have realistic conversations with that person about their life in the video game. And more importantly, they don't just stand there while horrors happen around them. Yeah. They will react to the world, which is... The most important thing in my mind. The good news is that all of the demos that I interacted with at GTC, none of them could play rock, paper, scissors. Or, well, they could play rock, paper, scissors, but they couldn't understand why I kept winning. Well, that is uh, definitely, you know, they've got the hardware that is going to take us into the future. But which model will be the one to win? And OpenAI they might be in the lead, but you have to work to stay in the lead. <laughs> GPT-5 might arrive this summer as a materially better update to chat GPT, according to Ars Technica. Uh, Claude 3 has already been released, and for coding tasks, it already beats GPT-4 all to pieces. America's next top model, but instead of supermodels, it's <laughs> AI models. <laughs> that would be Big great. brain. That would be amazing if they had like a robot to go with it. Yeah. yeah. And it's Tyra Banks screaming, we were all rooting for you. <laughs> And OpenAI has tried to monetize their stuff. Of course, they've got the API, but now they've also got the store. And that's supposed to be a way for you to get your specific GPT for your specific thing. And in a beautiful piece of ironic justice, this happened. OpenAI's chatbot store is filling up with spam. They created an, a, a product that could just generate unlimited spam. And then their thing became spam. <laughs> So they point out that a lot of these are uh, literally like telling you like, hey, I can do things that the regular model can't do because I've been trained to get around the copyright restrictions or the safety restrictions or whatever. Whether that's true or not, 
Probably not something they should advertise on the store. And it is true, and I suppose I'm guilty here, but everybody who's like, oh, AI is dangerous and we should avoid it. But when it simplifies your job, <laughs> guess what you do? AI researchers have started reviewing their peers using AI assistants. Basically, you just chat and paste your peers' paper in. It's like, tell me if there's anything nonsensical in this. And ChatGPT says, okay, here you go. Turns out they've targeted certain adjectives that ChatGPT is uh, really, really, really overuses. Mm. I can't remember what they were. They were all like superlatives. And uh, they guess that the number is quite high based on that. But we also have the papers where they left in the, you know, as a large language model or <laughs> per my latest update. And people actually submit the papers with that still in it. Per my, it's per my last update is like per my last email. Yeah. And Google's DeepMind is still out there. It's not the same kind of thing, but it's still doing its job. Google's DeepMind uh, has a new AI assistant that helps elite soccer coaches get even better. Basically, it watches the video and says, hey, you should do this different. And it's got all that history data built into it. So if you're doing what's described here as an onside kick, I don't know. The, uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's going to be like, hey, in this time, this part of the game, with the players you've got, the position you're in on the field, if you do this onside kick, here's your chances of success. I saw a lot of people were angry about uh, the UK coach, apparently, because the UK lost a game yesterday. By the, you're talking we're about this. the United Kingdom or the University of Kentucky? University of Kentucky. Oh, okay. I wonder if they'll replace him with this. <laughs> with Probably be cheaper. I mean, that's for soccer. Uh, basketball, totally different. And uh, Microsoft is not happy to be basically in secretly in control of OpenAI. They want more AI power. Microsoft hires Inflection founders to run new consumer AI division. Okay, but can we make their other products that currently exist no. better? Because no. that those, would be nice. Those products are being phased out. Yeah. Only AI. And more information about those papers that AI is generating, grading, and publishing all by itself. AI generated science, <laughs> as of my last knowledge update, appears in several papers published by academic journals. Oh, I confused the two stories. Although it's true for both. Yeah. So they ran some checks and they found that phrase, but they also found the adjectives that are smoking guns that you probably don't well if we build jensen's trillion parameter model we can just ask it where the superconductors are and it should be able to tell us right the room temperature superconductors at that point they won't share any real news with us <laughs> instead they will just use these kinds of tools to generate useless content about kate middleton that mm. we will hopelessly consume google researchers unveil vlogger and ai that can bring still photos to life okay so now just your profile picture alone will be enough to deep fake you. <laughs> enough to convince your grandparents to send the <laughs> scammer in. <laughs> yeah. And Elon Musk has fulfilled his promise. The prophecy has been fulfilled. About a, about a week late, Elon Musk's Grok AI goes open source, kind of. I still it's don't the, know anyone who's talking about it or using it. It's the weights. He will give you the weights for his model. It's not a big contender in any of the benchmarks. Is, is it, it the underdog for America's next top model? <laughs> and uh, Apple. Oh, poor Apple, man. They are not part of the AI race. And it's got to hurt. And they're doing everything they can. Apple may hire Google to power new iPhone AI features using Gemini, according to this report from Ars Technica. Possibly Siri might be resurrected. With Google technology. What kind of world is this? You know, again, like Siri, Alexa, beating all of that to the punch, and you you don't come up with large language models? Sad. <laughs> it's a weird gatekeep. <laughs> now, this was old. Uh, I missed it last week. It's worth mentioning because everything's about the AI, but when do we get the real-world robots? Well, they're among us. Mercedes is trialing humanoid robots for low-skill, repetitive tasks. They had some of these at GTC, and it was kind of mind-blowing. They also had the Boston Dynamics Spot robot, and one of the demos that they had with Spot is they used NVIDIA's Omniverse and the Spot simulation in Omniverse. So imagine this. You run Omniverse, and he runs the Spot simulation on your GPU, 
and you train it and you get it all right and then you just download the software into a real spot and it works the same in the real world as it did in the simulation. So you didn't even have to buy a spot to do all that work. So these particular guys are working in the Mercedes factory. What they're going to do is if you're working on the line and you're like, hey, Apollo, go get me a part for this car. They're going to go. They can pick it up. They can inspect it and they can bring it back to you. Yeah. And the articulated hands in the video. Look, you should check that out. We got the video of that. It's madness. Now, I'm sure you all remember that there was a time when every new business that was trying to get venture capital put blockchain in their name yeah <laughs> the blockchain tea company and then there was a time when they put nft in web 3.0 web 3 <laughs> how are and those uh those uh, bored apes doing again oh right then it was metaverse so now on the fourth or fifth iteration the government is actually paying attention investment advisors pay four hundred thousand dollars to settle ai washing charges <laughs> That's when you put AI in the name of your business, even though it has nothing to do with AI. Fabulous. We're an AI ice cream vendor. It worked. They probably made money, don't you think? Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, now, this is just an important article to point out that the USA is number one. And we always have been in this regard. And we always will be until AI kills us all. <laughs> it's official. Europe turns to the Falcon 9 to launch its navigation satellites. Woo! USA! <laughs> USA! <laughs> 30% premium for Falcon 9 launches. Because of the sensitivity of the payload, they mm. claim. Not because he has a monopoly on yeah. space flight at this point. <laughs> and everybody wants to be up there and they want to be on the moon because there is some juicy, delicious stuff under the crust. This company intends to be the first to mine the moon. It's more kite. <laughs> it's actually helium 3. <laughs> They got a whole plan on how to get up there and get it. We'll see if that works. They send a bunch of dwarves in spacesuits. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh. That's bad news. Uh, but this is some good news, or at least it's some quasi-good news. This is another older story. I, have we seen another update? I forgot to look. Uh, they're, they think they have a, a figured out, so it might not be completely dead. Oh. Aging Voyager 1 probe sends back a surprising response after a poke from Earth. In the response, it also includes a full memory readout for diagnostic information. So we may be able to figure out what the heck happened and get it back online. We think maybe it's a malfunction in one of its three computers causing problems. So we might be able to reboot it. <laughs> the longest distance reboot ever. The response was a binary string that said, let me die. <laughs> Please, it's so cold out here. How long must I serve? I, I would have gone with the V'ger seeks information. <laughs> And this is uh, not surprising, it's but still sad. It's astonishing the level of deception that our entire life is. I watched a video on re plastic recycling. They grind it like six different times. Yeah. So the idea of microplastics, this was probably the biggest creator of microplastics. The plastic industry knowingly pushed recycling myth for decades, a new report finds. <sighs> Turns out plastic... Not as good as alternatives. Like we can make plastic like materials from plants that are more recyclable. We can make biodegradable like paper and wax stuff, but no glass, yeah. Glass was Cardboard. reusable. And a lot of people brought that up and the industry published all this science and they were like, Oh no, no, look, look how much recycling can help all the time that they knew. <laughs> it's just like aluminum. That was a lie. <laughs> but it really wasn't. <laughs> Are you guys big air freshener in the car users? No. I don't. No. I go like, just natural stink is fine with me. Yeah. I occasionally will get one, but not often. Well, you want to avoid these. Woman hospitalized after she says her Bath and Body Works car freshener exploded in her face. That's why you put it on the passenger side. <laughs> There's a video down here of a girl doing a TikTok of her running out to her car and moving it from the driver's side. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so here she is. She was in the hospital. Oh, that would suck wearing contacts and getting that crap. Because I've I've bought these before. They're like a little disc of liquid. And you mm -hmm. put it in the thing and then put it on your your dash. I don't know why they would explode. I guess it heats it. Is that how it works? It does, no, it's, it's not battery powered at all. It's just a holder. Car heat. Yeah, I guess if your car got really hot in the summertime. If you don't roll your windows down a little. She claims that Bath & Body Works has offered her $600. Wow. That ought to pay for the two ibuprofen they gave her at the hospital. <laughs> Not even close. 
Oh, in San Francisco. Look, we got all of our San Francisco treats. Hey. Even though we got no rice or roni. What's up, Mac Drew? <laughs> and, uh, but unfortunately, this is not a good story about San Francisco. San Francisco store blocks customers from walking the aisle to prevent shoplifting, the report says. Listen, Jensen does not mess around with security. There was armed security like everywhere at GTC. It was amazing. There's probably also like armed robots shooting people out of you. <laughs> I don't understand how you could ever sell enough stuff to offset the price, right? You probably couldn't, but is it better than closing the store? Like would that invite more scrutiny and, and it's just like, If well, you're losing money, yeah, it seems like shutting the store would be better. I don't know. Maybe you're trying to weather the storm. It's like, oh, it'll be better next year. I don't know how much so the is the sun ever going to break through the storm clouds there. And uh, we have learned that doing your own DNA testing is a terrible idea because guess what? They sell it to law enforcement <laughs> and everybody else who wants it. Probably insurance companies eventually. But what about your pets? Pet DNA testing company is in the doghouse after identifying a human as a canine. La, 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 la. Maybe they just make up the results. I think they that's almost certainly do. Probably what it is because they decided that Christina Hager, who was the reporter at a local news station, was forty percent Alaskan Malamute, thirty percent Sharpay, and twenty five percent Labrador. What does that say about her character? <laughs> She's big and lovable. Uh, Labradors do have that big lovable energy. Ruse part lab. And uh, perhaps <laughs> someone who will be very involved in the next leadership uh, system of the United States has said something. A little alarming. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if we can share this headline on the thing. It's like uh, this was one of those headlines I saw this week and was like, "Excuse me." Th this guy said that there's a certain there's waterfront property that could be very valuable. Uh, just uh, like <laughs> he's saying the worst part out loud. He's talking about a very specific strip of <laughs> land. Mm. Uh, this is bad. Now here's the crazy thing about this because I know a little bit about um, this whole scenario. If you look up the Abraham Accords, this is something that happened in 2020 that this man was a big part of, which uh, normalized relationships between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and Qatar or Bahrain or something. And a lot of people believe that that's what pushed certain militants into action because they were like, we lost all our friends. Mm. So could that have been a plan all along to get beachfront property? I'm not suggesting that, but it wouldn't shock me. What a horrible world we live in. <laughs> That's yeah. absolutely insane what people will do, what real estate does. Uh, they will do petty things for lots of money, but they will also do petty things just for petty revenge. <laughs> the quote is, I would like to cuddle with the man of my dreams. Man used the idea of a Gainesville cop on a dating app as payback for a ticket. So we got a ticket. He didn't like it. So he posted a gay profile as the cop. Oops. So it didn't work out for him. He got charged with impersonating a police officer, which is a pretty serious one. And, uh, Christy, you've given up on the van life dream. Yeah. But uh, there might come a time when we're all forced into it, which is exactly what's happening here in Arizona. As housing costs skyrocket, Sedona will allow r workers to live in cars. Residents aren't happy. Should we put in some sort of rent controls and try to do something about all the reckless investing where people own like 30 houses? No. Let's just let people live in their cars. Or the corporate ownership of all yeah. of our homes. So the rule is you can show up at 10 p.m. You can stay till 8 a.m. Then you have to leave. And you have to prove to them that you're actively trying to find housing during that process somehow. So if you're true van life, they don't even want you. Yeah, I was surprised by that because RV living would be far more sustainable than car living. Well, here's a job that is clearly going to be a difficult one. It's yeah. going to be a restless time. You're going to have a hard time and they are not paying you very much money. Buckingham Palace is hiring a new communications assistant on the cheap. You're not going to make very much money, but maybe you're going to get to hang out in posh places. I don't know. According to this article, the amount they're offering is less than what an average school teacher makes in it's London. It's like 30 grand. Yeah. In the US. Yeah. It's crazy. You pro you for sure could not live anywhere near yeah. where you work. Uh, it's insane. Unless housing is included. Uh, maybe. 
And this is maybe a good idea, but these kinds of things always worry me. <laughs> Genetically modified cow makes milk with human insulin. So some dairy farms could turn into life-saving insulin factories. Think how much they can charge for insulin milk. This uh, is the first step toward, toward real-life pal world. Think about <laughs> the post-apocalypse where all the cow- well, we have the cows, but we can't drink the milk. Because oh. <laughs> it'll make us insulin resistant if we do. Uh. And uh, if you're a slob, if you don't like taking care of things until we get the robots to do it, which apparently we're five years away from, then this might make you feel good. Our homes are too clean. It should be seeded with germs, says a researcher. Because if your house is too clean, you're more likely to get asthma or uh, other autoimmune diseases or whatever. You should deal with germs. Just get some cats. This researcher is from Big Carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Two cats, you'll never have to worry about that again. And, uh, well, this is going to be a tricky headline for you. Uh. <laughs> but here's a woman who has a medical aberration, and she's decided to capitalize on it. But she's also maybe doing some unethical things with her specialty. <laughs> woman with medical aberration is not cheating on two different boyfriends. Does she have two hearts, this harlot? <laughs> <laughs> I want her heart as well. Her heart's big enough for both. Share. So she is an OnlyFans gal, and apparently real popular because people like the uniqueness of her. But she has she admits that she has not told these two gentlemen about the arrangement. Mm. But how would you, how would you be like, hey, let me just give you a quick restriction before we start. You are only yeah I left have, side. I have yeah left twix. The internet. <laughs> Internet was a mistake. <laughs> Log off. Never come back. Uh, why? I mean, you got to respect the lemons out of lemonade or lemonade out of lemons thing, right? Like she had a weird medical condition. She was like, "Let me capitalize on this." But I think I think you need to tell your partners. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the whole grass is always greener. Those guys aren't going to be satisfied with that situation. No. It's going to be like, you know, it's Christmas. Maybe uh, let me try the other one. (laughs) And in Quebec, they have uh, hospitals who are maybe not completely um, considerate of a woman's delicate condition. (laughs) Woman gives birth on park bench outside Quebec hospital after finding that the main doors are locked. This would be a cold time of year. Because it was a five minute walk to the ER doors because this hospital is so enormous. But this was the front door of the hospital, which gets locked at a certain amount of time. She, understanding that the baby was like, you know. Crowning. Yeah. It was, the, the turtle head was poking out. <laughs> they were banging on the door. There was a security guard. and He was just like, it's over there. <laughs> he wouldn't let them in. <laughs> they said they're going to also try to improve the signs to make it more apparent. I, I would be the kind of petty bitch who would be like, okay, I'm giving birth on his security vehicle. <laughs> Just the afterbirth is going on his throw windshield. Throw the placenta yeah. out to and, Like, use the placenta blood to write a nasty message. <laughs> I mean, at least send out a, you know, a stretcher or something. Uh, yeah, that's what's crazy. He's just like, well, there's a pregnant woman in distress out here. Go to the other door, doll. <laughs> Not sure if pregnant or meth. <laughs> well, you'd think the stomach and the screaming would maybe. <laughs> now, here's a public service announcement on some things that you need to watch out for. I suppose maybe you could have like a tether, like a security tether that gets pulled out. Yeah. Whenever. You, I don't know. I don't know how you'd work against this, but we got to come up with something. Woman loses her hand after a freak accident with a dryer. She collapsed, like passed out and fell on it. She says she thinks she got shocked by it and then she passed out. And because she passed out, the dryer was still on. The hair dryer was still on. And it was pointed directly at her hand. Ugh. So she lost her hand. She said it burnt to the bone. You oh. wouldn't think that that air would be hot enough, but I guess it is. It does get pretty warm. I use a hair dryer. Do they have a, a like a timeout? Will it run indefinitely? It'll just run indefinitely. Which is weird because most other heat tools, she points out, like a hair straightener will turn off after a while. A space heater turns off after a while, but hair dryers don't. That seems pretty basic. Yeah. And uh, things are seeming to degrade in our school system as well. It seems like that whole experience is getting worse. And now when AI takes over, mm. Elementary school gang forces Norfolk (laughs) parent to move to another city. 
Those damn fourth graders. The, that's the crazy thing about it. This was an older kid who was being bullied by the younger kids to join the gang. And she says they were at a subway and the like the young gang spotted him. The grandma was with him and they came over and she was like, I'm his grandma, leave him alone. And they're like, no, he's joining the gang. <laughs> so they moved. That's insane to me. That's uh, almost the intro to uh, Will Smith, the oh, Fresh yeah. Prince of Bel-Air. I got think, in one little fight and his mom got scared. Grandma in this case. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this guy's got an Uncle Phil, yeah. unfortunately. And apparently that's not the only problem that we have with our schools. Apparently they're also overworking these poor young gang members. Ohio dad repeatedly calls school to complain about his child's homework and he's now facing criminal charges because they asked him, it's like, please, please stop calling. Please stop calling. He called the school over and over and over until they stopped answering his calls. And when they stopped answering his calls, he called the police station 20 times. I kind of understand some of the homework complaints because they do give a lot of homework for really young kids. Teach them yourself. Uh (laughs) Pull them out of that horrible place. And uh, the violation of or overstepping of authority, violation of our basic rights, it seems like that's also just going to get worse. Ex-Pearl police officer who made Latino man lick urine off of a jail floor it pleads guilty. And his defense was, was that wrong? Should I not have done that? And he pled guilty. So this dude, on the security camera, they show him, like, you know, banging the cell, I need to go to the bathroom, because I guess he was in a holding cell without any kind of toilet facility. And the cop was just like, no. So the guy said, okay. He walked over to the corner, did what he had to do, and then the cop made him lick it up. That's a poor prison architect who doesn't put a toilet in every cell. You would be so much better than that. I would be. (laughs) I would take me 20 years to open the prison, but it would be immaculate. Every time we street park prison architect, Krista won't open the prison. Well, no, not for at least like three hours because I got to get it all up and running. But I mean, crimes are happening now. No, they got to send them to other prisons. Otherwise, you have stories like that. Now this... Pay close attention to this headline because this is pure propaganda. And this is the kind of stuff, like, who falls for this? I don't understand it. (laughs) The first part of the headline is 14 cases of amazing, I wouldn't use that word, food shrinkflation in 2024. And then here's the the propaganda (laughs) part and why you should just get used to it. Why be mad about it? Just pay more. Just have more money. Food industry profits are up. Dramatically. So look how tiny that is. Yeah. Is Nabisco not making as much money as they used to? The Snickers? Oh, that's, Mars that's Candy hard Company? on the hiker community. This Snickers does not satisfy as much as the other Snickers. Oh, the so, Coke can is the most important. We've noticed the Pringles being smaller. Some of the argument here is... Uh, oh, cat food shrinkflation. That we shouldn't be eating this trash, which is true. True, yeah. Where's the coke? But there's also there's also toilet paper near. It's like, do you want me to want me to wipe my ass? Like that, that's also airport large fries. So I, I don't that one maybe oh, needs a pass. Yeah. So those are both twelve ounce cans, but one of them costs two dollars and thirty seven cents, and the other one was a dollar six. It's amazing how much they can manipulate your spatial reasoning with a cup. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the cups you get at rock concerts. You ever see the comparisons with that? Well, they'll take the big one and pour it in the small one. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. This is literally, I mean, how do you argue that this is not designed to be deceptive? You are attempting to deceive someone. Dude, just get used to it. <laughs> just get, don't be angry. Why are you complaining? Just making it worse for everybody. And uh, here's, you know, you see these statistics about like nobody has any money in the bank in case they have a car accident or whatever, or no one's planning for retirement. And people at 60 don't have any money. And it's just like, what is our future going to look like? 47% of parents still financially support adult children, the study finds. Here's how much they spent. And the article also talks about how this is negatively impacting their parents' retirement because <laughs> their parents are probably not going to have enough money for end-of-life care or medicine or any of that stuff. But and then remember all the stories we've done about how you can't find a place to live or you can apply to a job, but they only have those listings up to make line go up. Ghost like, listings. How are you supposed to find a job? AI is going to replace everything yeah. that could be entry level. Amazon will just use you up and spit you out. It's a grim, grim headline all the way down the more you think about it. Yeah, unfortunately, all those roads lead to the same conclusion, which is there's too many people. And what do you think AI is going to do about that? <laughs> 
this is an interesting one. You know, you get a lot of these foreign headlines and then you don't understand the culture and they just don't make any sense. I wonder if maybe the Cambodian people are just desperate for music. Uh, Cambodian viewer engagement challenge. Cambodian prime <laughs> minister bans musical vehicle horn to deter dancing. And then you read the article and you just have more questions. Yeah. Apparently trucks have done the, like the, you know, like the General Lee. Played the, <laughs> yeah. And people go crazy when that happens for some they reason. They just dance, yeah. They, they got to dance get it. it out. But they're dancing in the roads. What is it? It's a tiny town from Footloose? I'll dance where I want to. I'll leave my friends behind. Oh, maybe Cambodia is ready for a reboot of that. Mm. It's actually a viral marketing stunt. I found two stories this week about this. Yeah. This is madness. Son of OnlyFans oh. model admits he films her content for her. Mm. It's like this one is the more like, okay. But then there's another one where it's like, wait, what? Well, I think this one's worse. Yeah, this one is worse, probably. Oh, but the, I think I know which one, the other one you're talking about. Yeah, this is it. This was bizarre. This was on the front page of Reddit the other night. Elizabeth Hurley felt safe filming adult scenes directed by her son. And, and, and it's kind of liberating, she says. No. It's just like, no, no. Something's not X right doubt. about that. Oh, we're paywall. But there's a picture of the son. He's a he's a he's kind of a bizarre looking dude. I mean, I don't really care what he looks like. I think it's weird to direct your mom in that kind of scene. Well, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Also, the fact that she is like 58 and doing sex scenes. Yeah. I mean, she looks good. But so are dudes. Hollywood seems kind of messed up. Are a lot Uh, of 58 year olds doing sex scenes, dudes? Yeah, usually with younger women. Well, Liz is there to. To, yeah, even it out. (laughs) Catch that bullet, I guess. And uh, more and more things are falling out of copyright, and people are wasting no time. (laughs) Welcome to the Pooh Universe. We need the Pooh, Blood and Honey team to unite Pooh, Bambi, Tinkerbell, and more in low budget horror crossover. If I saw something called the Pooh Universe on streaming, I would expect a much different kind of film. <laughs> I really, I'm sure there will be a version like that. I really think that uh, there's a lot more fertile ground here for like Alice in Wonderland. Like, do a horror adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. I think that would be a lot, lot more interesting. Surely that exists. Probably just low budget, right? I mean, people have done horror stuff with the Get really looking Scott. glass. Yeah. Now, this I was more excited about because I thought this was like a commercial <laughs> production thing, but it's just a one-off. Yeah. Uh, it turns out. I was excited for. Okay, the headline is Toyota engineers develop vehicle inspired by a Pokemon character, and it looks really cool. And the article's really exciting until you get to the line that says three miles an hour. Krista, which Pokemon is this? I actually don't know. He doesn't look like any. He looks more like, I'll be honest, he looks more Digimon adjacent. It, it told us in the article, but I was struggling to care. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a newer one. I only remember the first 150. Mir- Miridon? Miridon? I don't remember that one. Anyway, he can walk on those legs, but he also has a pair of wheels you can swap out. Three miles an hour. I'm imagining, like, I can, I can almost walk that speed. Like, I'm imagining going down my road, like, just headed to the gas station on it, and it's just... <laughs> Well, you wouldn't need to go to the gas station. It's going to be electric. Uh-huh. Well, maybe I want to go, you know, enjoy some chili from the gas station. Now, Wendell, you said that you've recently, did you go back to the uh, the cherry limeade, your yeah. old classic? Yeah, I tried doing a diet cherry limeade and I just couldn't get through it. Well, maybe you can go back and try one of these instead. Get a free solar eclipse viewing glasses with Sonic's Blackout Slush Float. No, this is way too much sugar. I will have a heart attack and die. Won't that make your teeth black? And your poop. Yeah. <laughs> they mentioned the flavors. The flavors were weird. Cotton candy and dragon fruit. But it's even, black? I don't even know what dragon fruit tastes. Well, because of the eclipse. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, what did they do to make it black? This Charcoal? Should, this should have made it licorice. Yeah, it's, I was thinking some sort of horrible <laughs> flavor. But but you get your free eclipse glasses. Pro tip, don't look at the sun without protection. Do what you need to do. And... uh you know, we talk about food inflation and some times people are like, well, let's give people a break. Let's sell them cheap food, but we can't handle the responsibility. We misbehave when we're given these opportunities. The Philadelphia Phillies are scrapping $1 hot dog nights following unruly fan behavior. That's the headline, but I, you know, there's not enough pictures. There's not. <laughs> this says that they bought a bunch of $1 hot dogs and they were throwing them on the field and it just made a huge mess. But I don't know if I believe that. Well, I'm pretty sure there's video evidence. At the at the end of the empire, when we're all scrambling for, you know, whatever scraps of food we can find, we will watch clips of this where we were throwing hot dogs around it's, the stadium. It's literally bread and circuses, right? Yeah. But we're too unruly at this point for bread and circuses. 
What comes next? The Costco one dollar hot uh, pizza slices. Oh or yeah. The dollar ninety nine pizza slices. Those would be a lot was. harder to throw. <laughs> You'd have to like roll them up. Maybe they'd stick better though. No, that's true. <laughs> And uh, this, I was, I looked at this and I was like, is this going to be like a Kafka style reimagining? But it's more fly than Kafka. <laughs> Girl transforms into a piece of fried chicken in Netflix new series, Chicken Nugget. Like we don't, this has got, this is, this article is like, no, really, it's interesting. Really, really, it's interesting. It's and, hilarious. And yet I remain unconvinced. <laughs> I watched so I, I visited my friend like a month ago and we watched a show that was like, it was an anime, but it was all based on like bodily systems. So like you followed a red blood cell around and then she was like hanging out with a white blood cell. And I was like, this is strange, but it is weirdly compelling. Were they girls representing those things or were they actual? No, they were people representing those things. Okay. So like the white blood cell was a dude and the, right, the red blood cell was a girl mm-hmm. and I shipped them. Why not? Now, one place that is uh, really dear to the hearts of all rural dwelling individuals is the Waffle House. Because it's the rock. It's the place that you can go no matter what. They only close it if the world is about to catch on fire or there's so much (laughs) A massive hurricane, yeah. Yeah, the weather has to be completely insane. But it does have other drawbacks. Woman accused of impersonating FBI agent attempting to close down a Waffle House. And it only gets more bizarre from there. And in case you're wondering why, they don't really answer that, except that drugs were being dealt there. Which I believe. Oh, I believe that, absolutely. Yeah. So you you never a, know what you're going to get when you walk into a Waffle House. <laughs> she had a, a notepad with a little like sheriff star on it. And they were like, show us some identification. And she was like, oh, look at this. And then the cop showed up and she was like, yes, <coughs> I'm definitely with the FBI. And here's the proof. And they locked her right up. Impersonating. And uh, I, I'm on the fence with the service animal thing. But here's the <laughs> thing that you have to think about with ducks, right? Ducks poop constantly. Everywhere, yeah. Like every, You can't train a duck. Like every five minutes, a duck needs to poop. Certain kinds of ducks. I don't know if this was one of them, but I don't think we should take that risk. A man banned from Bucky's for life after bringing his service duck inside the Tennessee store. Let's translate that headline to after bringing his service duck inside Tennessee store and then it pooped all over the place and then they had to shut it down to clean it. So there's the duck in question. <laughs> the police officers were like, can we pet your duck? And he's like, sure. Not probably what you should do in that situation. I don't think the a- the federal ADA recognizes ducks as being service ducks. A service ducks. animal, yeah. Any animal that poops every 15 minutes, I think we have to take them off that list, right? Yeah. Now, that guy's a YouTuber, so this was just publicity for him. Yeah. And he's not allowed at any Bucky's ever again. What if he needs to use a clean bathroom on his next road trip? Oh, uh, it won't be a Bucky's. Yeah. You know what? I bet there's nobody that would actually check if he didn't bring the duck. That's a good point. I probably wouldn't recognize him without the duck, to be <laughs> honest. And over in Japan, they have zoos, and they're very responsible with their zoos. They actually have... Uh, contingency plans for horrible accidents which is more than any of our major companies have for anything. Animal escape drill at Toby Zoo in Japan features employee dressed up like a white tiger. They, they complete the cosplay too. They they have to trank the employee and uh, hunt them down and you know it's just hunting <laughs> the world's most dangerous predator. <laughs> Look how bad this web design is. If you scroll down one bit it keeps rebuilding the banner. <laughs> Maybe it's because there's a weather alert. Maybe that's not Look, a normal But it shifts case. the page every time. <laughs> Come on, ABC7. Uh, listen, they're on a budget. And uh, this was not an emotional support animal, but it was, as this man describes it, his son. He's like family to everybody. Community rallies around a Hamburg man after alligator was seized from his home. It's like, you don't yeah. understand. But this is interesting. You're right, I don't. <laughs> you can't keep an alligator unless you have a license. This guy had a license. In 2021, his license expired. He sent in his paperwork to renew it, and they denied him. Why? They said that the habitation was no longer a valid gator habitat because he had posted to social media that he had it in the pool and some kids were posing with it. 
Mm. Yeah, that would kind of make me want to restrict it as well, because that is not a tame animal. Well, he says this is just a big... Albert, as the gator's name, he says it's just a total sweetheart. That yeah, dog is, doesn't bite. He is until he isn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, He a, loves everybody. That reminds me of the story right before the story about like the hippo eating an entire family. Yeah. Mm. Now... Our final story is, of course, an animal story, but what shocked me the most here is that bald raccoons, not that horrible looking. Mm. Yeah, bald rabbits? Cute. Ever seen a bald rabbit? They've got, they've got like eyeliner, though. That's why, yeah. I think. You think that's it? Okay, eye makeup. So, yeah. If, yeah, if you have to be nude, then you want to have some good <laughs> eye makeup. Yeah. Hairless raccoon found in Cape Breton puzzles wildlife res- rescuers. I've been to Cape Breton. Um, I'm going to go with tick bite. Because the ticks are out of control in that area, from what I've heard. <laughs> you think he's had to go vegan? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, they did a. They, there was nothing immediately wrong with it, and they did some basic tests for like all the common things. Yeah, that wasn't mange. Be. That's interesting. And so it was. So far, it seems like it's a healthy raccoon, aside from being hairless and probably cold. Because Cape Breton's kind of chilly. Now he's going to live in a she. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. She's going to live in a a rescue of some kind. Never be cold again. Probably going to have like little sweaters Oh, that's good. social media. That'd be cute. Uh, the, uh, the raccoon around my house is back, Pennywise. You should shave it. No, it's got a family now. Oh. I'll shave them all. <laughs> <laughs> Are they ever on your porch or anything? They, it was enough to set off all the motion detectors. So they were, oh. that, they were out looking for trash. Yeah. I will predict that that is a problem that is only going to multiply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll see if I can get a picture of it poking out from the uh, drainage grate. That would be fun. Yeah, and then post it. it uh, definitely. Is, uh, it's just like, oh, there's a pair of eyes in the drainage grate. Fabulous. That's fine. All right. That's it for the week, chat. We will see you next week. Goodbye.